This past summer, I was a part of the Wellesley and Washington Summer Internship Program. And I interned in the chambers of a federal district court judge for the D.C. Circuit Court. And it was through the generosity of a Wellesley alumna's connection with the judge that I was able to take part in this internship. And as an undergraduate, it was a pretty unprecedented experience. This judge's chambers had never had an undergraduate in the office before. The alums are so amazing, and I can only, I, I look forward to being one among them. The advice that I would give incoming students is as much as I would encourage them to take advantage of the community here on campus, I'd really encourage them to go and explore the greater Boston area. and changes you see me through. I show no couldn't have survived without you. I came to Wellesley, I, I mean, I didn't even run unless someone was like running after me. I took a fencing class and the coach just said, you should try out for the team. And I did, and I've been on the team for over a year now. Wellesley just puts you in an environment. You don't have to be in a box. I've always been the girl the, that always hang out with the boys. So for me, my choice coming here, um, one of my reasons was I wanted to try it out and for once to be surrounded by all women. I love the fact that all of the leaders on campus are all women. The first few days I thought, where are the boys? Where am I going to find them? I think first years especially think that they will never ever interact with the opposite sex, but as Chikoti and I can prove, <laughs> our social life is probably even better now than it was when I was in high school. Now I choose where I go to find my friends. I have my group of guy friends that I go and like watch football games with. I totally second that. You can always go to a party and come back to your quiet, clean room. <laughs> <laughs> Not only did I come from a tiny country, but also a tiny town in that tiny country. And now I come here and I was no longer the only one speaking up in classroom. So it took definitely some getting used to. It doesn't matter if you had a 4.5 GPA. So did she, and so did the girl next door. And really within even the first few weeks, everyone starts to realize that it's not overwhelming. It's really stimulating. Definitely, I wouldn't change it for anything. I like to be challenged. So today we're gonna to talk about what multi-faith council means to us here at Wellesley, but we're gonna start by introducing ourselves. So let's start with Justine. I'm a Mennonite. I'm a Baha'i. Roman Catholic. I'm a Sikh. United Methodist. Jewish. Hindu. Pagan. Evangelical Christian. I'm Muslim. Roman Catholic. This group is the Multi-Faith Council. They come to discuss their thoughts in this kind of open forum. Question. Well, we believe in multiculturalism, but the question is, do we practice it? And now in our world of increased terrorism, the fear of other people inhibits us. A group of 16 Wellesley students with Victor and some other faculty members went to northern India to understand 
how Gandhiism is applied today in grassroots development. It's helped me narrow my focus in what this huge, this ambiguous term development is. How do you measure the success of organizations to bring communities together and allow them to achieve their development needs? As part of my Pickering Foreign Affairs Fellowship, after graduate school, I'm going to be serving in the U.S. Foreign Service for four years. So what's going on with the relief efforts? We're working with schools in the Boston area to try and make it a bigger effort and it would actually be really helpful to kind of go over a couple of the things we're working on with you. Oh, we could definitely do that. I'm interested in pediatric oncology, designing drug analogs to cure cancer. I ultimately want to use my economic background to promote the arts. I will definitely be involved in public service in some form or another. No matter what I do in life, I committed to doing AIDS research and helping HIV AIDS patients. I've always had a passion to be an international journalist. 